This is Ms. Black. We are in Math 099 Open Campus for Bipsy, and we are in Module 20. And this is our second video in Module 20. And we've been focusing on solving equations other than linear and quadratic. And we saw in the previous module that equations can contain fractions. They can be rational. Well, our last module today shows us that equations can also contain square root symbols. And if you recall from previous modules, something with a square root symbol is called a radical. So today our goal is to solve a radical equation. So let's go up to the board. Okay. If you look in your notes, I'm going to be focusing on, ex on equations 1 and 3. Okay, so if you look at these, these equations are obviously different than equations we've seen before. Because these equations have square root symbols in them. Square root symbols in them. That's why we call these radical equations. Remember, radical is another word for root. Every equation is different. Therefore, every equation has its own trick. These are not solved. You do not have the letter x by itself. It's stuck in a square root symbol. It's stuck in a square root symbol. So let me give you a real life analogy. When I see these radical equations, I think of a house being on fire. This symbol is the house, and there's a person stuck inside. This symbol is a house, and there's a person stuck inside. And your job is to get that x free to get it out of the symbol. Now, what kind of symbol is this? It's a square root. That's one of your order of operations. Remember, this whole semester, we've been always going back to, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Every operation has an opposite. We've seen, by working many equations now, the opposite of subtract is to add. The opposite of divide is multiply. Well, guys, Remember the square root symbol falls under the P because it's a grouping symbol? It has an opposite. Opposite of square roots is the E. It's the exponent. It's the exponent of 2. So to get rid of this square root symbol today, we're going to do an exponent. We're going to do a square. So if you look here, you can't move the 5 in there. You don't take something on the outside and bring it in. Can't get the x out. We have to get rid of the symbol. So my analogy is this house is on fire. Well, to put out the fire, you need to call the fireman. The fireman is your exponent. The opposite of square root is to square. And because it's an equation, we keep balance. If you square the left side, you square the right side. Now, we're reducing everything we've learned. We know squaring means to write this twice, right? So this would be square root of x times square root of x. We learned in previous modules we can multiply that. That would be the square root of x squared, right? x times x is x squared. And we learned in previous modules, square root means something times itself. What times itself is x squared? x. And the symbol would go away. Now, you don't need to show all this work because you're learning a concept. And the concept is squares and square roots are opposites. What do opposites do to each other? They cancel out. Just like when we solve an equation. If I add 8 and you subtract 8, it cancels out. If I multiply by 5 and you divide by 5, it cancels out. So you're learning that exponent and that symbol are opposites. So it's like the fireman puts out the fire. They cancel. That leaves you with x. Then you're going to take 5 and you're going to square it, and there's your solution. Just like we've talked about, if you solve it, you better check it. So you write the original. That was the original. You replace, you substitute for x the number you got, 25. When you check, it's all numbers. So all you do is work it. What is the square root of 25? 5. Does 5 equal 5? It checks. This is our solution. So guys, that's the big trick for today. To solve a radical equation, to get rid of a square root, you square. If you square the left side, you square the right side to keep balance. 
Okay, let's try another one. Here's my example three in my notes. I have square root of x equals negative 5. Again, my x is stuck in this root symbol. So to get rid of a square root, I'm going to square the left side. I'm going to square the right side. There's no work here. Squares and square roots are opposites. They are inverse operations, so they cancel out. And that leaves you with x. On the right side, negative 5 squared means negative 5 times negative 5, which is 25. But wait, you are not done. I'm warning y'all. If you solve it, you must check it. There is no guarantee in higher math that this is the correct answer. You always check by writing the original. That's the original equation I gave you. I'm going to replace, substitute for x, 25. Everything else stays the same. I'm going to work this. I know the square root of 25 is 5. Does 5 equal negative 5? No, it does not check. And I'm warning y'all, we're in college math. Just because you get an answer doesn't mean it's correct till you check it. That doesn't check. So if it doesn't check, you got to throw it out. It's useless. Think about it. What number can you square root that will spit out a negative? There is no number. So remember, they're waiting for an answer. The question saying, what is the solution? What is the answer? You have no answer. So what's your famous phrase? No solution. That means there is no answer. There's no number you can put back in the original that will make it balance. What's the symbol for this? The zero with the slash. All right, let's try one more in your notes. Let's do a difficult one. Let's look at example five. And you're going to see by doing example five, we are going to use all the information from previous modules. And that's what makes algebra is so difficult. Algebra is not difficult if you know your previous information. So our last example we're going to work is example 5. This is an equation. It has an equal sign. My job is to get x by itself. I'm looking. I'm going, oh, wait a minute. I can't do anything because I have a square root symbol. So I can't take this x and put it with this x. I can't move this 1 and put it with this 5. Can't move anybody. They're stuck in a symbol. Just like when you have parentheses. You can't move anything till you get rid of parentheses. Well, we can get rid of this square root symbol by doing its opposite. The inverse of square rooting is squaring. If you square the left side, you square the right side. One square on the left, one square on the right to keep balance. You do not put a square on that and a square on that. That would be two of them and then it wouldn't be balanced. It's got to stay balanced. So to get rid of a square root, one square on the left, one square on the right. What do squares and square roots do? They're opposites. They cancel, like the fireman putting out the fire. So all, what I'm left with is x plus 5. Now, here's where the boo-boos are going to come in, because you are going to look at this and make a careless error, and this is from the first couple of modules, the very beginning, chapter 12. What does it mean when you have x minus 1 squared? Well, squaring means you have it twice. And you have got to recognize by now, to multiply a binomial times a binomial, we do that FOIL method. We make the little smiley guy. Here's his eyeballs. That's where y'all are going to mess up. The left side you leave alone. And now we're going to do FOIL. First, x times x, x squared. Outers, x times negative 1, negative 1x. Inners, negative 1 times x, negative 1x. Last, negative 1 times negative 1, plus 1. So here we are using something from chapter 12 learned eon ago. We know when we do FOIL, we have like terms. We got to put them together. So we have x plus 5 equals x squared. These are both negative. They don't cancel. You add them. A negative 1 and a negative 1 is a negative 2x. Now look. Here's what you learn in chapter 16. This is not a linear equation. It's got an x squared. 
it is quadratic. So now we have a decision to make. How do you want to solve it? Do you want to set it equal to zero and factor? Do you want to isolate the square and square root both sides? Do you want to do the quadratic formula? Do you want to do complete the square? You have four decisions. I will tell you guys honestly, most of the times when you get a quadratic equation, your first instinct should be to set it equal to zero and see if it factors. Because that's normally the quickest and easy way, and that's what we all like to do in higher math. So to set this equal to zero, I'm going to move the x plus 5. Why is Ms. Black not going to move the x squared? Well, because we discussed this a long time ago. If you move the x squared to the left, it's going to become negative. And you never want your x squared to be negative. In your quadratic equations, you always want your x squared to be positive. So we're going to move the x by subtracting it, and we're going to move the 5 by subtracting it. So we can move them at the same time because they're moving by the same operation. So that a cancel, give us 0. That a cancel, give us 0. That's your additive inverses. x squared, a negative 2x and a negative 1x is negative 3x. Positive 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Okay, so now we have a quadratic equation. I'm going to write it up here. x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals 0. Because I don't know about you, I'd rather have the 0 on the right side. All we're going to do is move it. Once you get your quadratic equal to 0, it should, we hope, factor. What rule of factoring is this? 1, 2, 3. It's the trinomial rule. So I'm going to put two parentheses. What multiplies to x squared? x times x. What can multiply to 4? 1 and 4, 2 and 2. How do you decide? You read. I want to multiply to 4 and subtract to 3. 2 and 2 would make 0 if you subtract it. 1 and 4 work. I want to subtract to negative 3, so the sign goes to the larger. The 1 becomes a positive. Now we're not quadratic. We have two x's. They're linear. So we write our two linear equations. And we solve each. So we get one solution negative one, and the other solution's four. So everybody look. We started with an equation that had a radical, a square root. We knocked it out and made the equation quadratic. And a quadratic should have two solutions. But here's the problem. The original wasn't quadratic. So there's no guarantee these both work. So I'm warning y'all. The third time. If you solve it, you must check it. Where do you check? You go back to the very original. So now that we got two solutions, the only way to see if these both are right is to write the original equation. The original equation was square root of x plus 5 equals x minus 1. You can only check one at a time. Let's check the four first. So where there's an x, I'm going to put 4. 4 plus 5. Where there's an x, I'm going to put a 4. We're going to work this out. We know we've got to add what's in the root. That gives us 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. We're going to work out the right side. 4 minus 1 is 3. Hey, that checks. This works. This is an answer. That's the number that makes both sides balance. Now wait, you have another answer. Don't automatically discard this. This may also work. Sometimes in real life, there can be two solutions. So we're going to check this. Again, we're going to use the original. There's the original equation. Where the x is, I'm going to put the negative 1. Where the x is, I'm going to put the negative 1. I'm going to work inside first. Negative 1 plus 5 is 4. Negative 1 minus negative 1 is negative 2. What's the square root of 4? Oh, wait a minute. That's 2. 2 doesn't equal negative 2. It doesn't check. So this answer goes in the garbage. Now, do not say no solution. No solution means you have no number that checks. Do you have a number that works? You do. Your solution is x equals 4. If that one didn't check and we had nothing, then we would say no solution. But we do have an answer. So the solution here is x equals 4. So the moral of the story is very simple, guys. All algebra is is a building block. I showed you a new equation today, a radical equation. 
You had to learn one simple trick, how to get rid of a root. We talked about roots in modules ago. The opposite of a root is an exponent. So the opposite of square root is squaring. We used some knowledge you've already learned. Then what happened is once we got rid of the root, it became a quadratic equation. We used all our skills from chapter 12 and chapter 13 on multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting. We used our factoring skills. Then we got it back to down to algebra one, two linear equations. As you proceed, on to college math, college algebra, realize you will use everything I've taught you in these 20 modules. Not one piece of information will go wayside. All we're going to do in college math is build on these skills and show you more and more ways to use them. So your job is to keep practicing. I was glad I got to instruct you in Open Campus. Have a wonderful day.